All right, so I've actually gone ahead and worked out the rest of this problem already, so I'm just going to talk you through what I did. Um, <clears throat> in the last video, we came up with the transformation that's going to take um, our nice rectangle S in the UV plane in uh, onto our um, less nice rectangle R in the XY plane. Um, and in order to now evaluate the double integral with this change of coordinates or a change of variables, we need to um, we need to find our Jacobian. So here we have x and y in terms of u and v, uh, functions of u and v. So we need their first order partials, partial of x with respect to both u and v, partial of y with respect to both u and v. I did that here. Notice each of them are equal to one half except this one, which is negative one half. Down here I set up my Jacobian. Remember the x's and y's x's and y's, those determine the rows of the Jacobian, so one half, one half, negative one half, one half. The u's and v's determine the columns. Um, this Jacobian comes out to a constant one half. So what I did is I came over here and I, I made a change of variables, um, uh, which to, to see where this change of variables is coming from, if we come back up and look at the original integral, we're integrating over this region r, and the integrand is x plus y times e to the x squared minus y squared, which can be factored to x plus y, x minus y. This is convenient because not only did our change of variables uh, give us a more, or a simpler rectangle to work with in the uv plane, but it's actually going to make our integrand look a lot simpler. Um, remember, u was defined to be x minus y, and v was defined to be x plus y which we're seeing both of those show up in this integrand. So with the appropriate substitutions, that integrand becomes this, v e to the uv. What I didn't do yet is I didn't change the dA um, into uh, my Jacobian times du dv. My Jacobian was one half. You see, I kind of squeezed that in right there, du dv. I'm gonna bring the one half out and notice the iterated integral that we ended up with because s is a nice rectangle where the uh, axis, where the um, sides are parallel to my u and v axes, I can set up an iterated integral as we did in section 15.1. Um, so to integrate this, we're gonna integrate with respect to u first. Remember by Fubini's theorem, we can do it in either order. It's easier if we, if we integrate with respect to u first, however. I also brought the one half that we got from our Jacobian out. Um, and then if we look at what happens here, um, integrating this with respect to u gives me e to the uv evaluated from 0 to 2, which uh, gives me this integrand right here, e to the 2v minus 1 after evaluating those. Then we integrate again with respect to v, uh, giving me this, which simplifies to 1 fourth e to the 6 minus 7 fourths. So the it, it seems like kind of a lengthy process, and these are one of the more difficult examples, I think, just because we had to come up with our transformation um, by graphing this region out and looking at what the lines looked like. Um, <clears throat> most of the problems, like I had said before, that you're going to see in the homework will provide this for you. They're going to give you the transformation, but not all of them. Some of them will ask you to come up with the transformation yourself. And again, Usually we're looking to the region first to suggest what that transformation is. Now, if you're still struggling with, you know, what the transformation should look like, sometimes the integrand also provides a good clue. So again, we saw x plus y's and x minus y's showing up in here. It may occur to you after looking at this integrand, after factoring here, that one of your variables should be x plus y and the other one should be the x minus y. Um, but there's not a universal rule for, for how to know what the best change of variable is. Okay, um, one last thing to look at here. So here, uh, T is going to be a transformation uh, that maps a solid now in UVW space. So that would be three space where I've labeled the axes U, V, and W um, into X, Y, Z space uh, via these functions here. So what we're, what we're kind of working towards is a way to take the idea behind the Jacobian and generalize it to functions of three variables instead of just functions of two variables. We don't need to go through an entire derivation again because it would be very similar to what we've already done. But um, we end up with this 
as our Jacobian. Because it's a function of three variables, and each variable x, y, and z is a function of the other three variables u, v, and w, um, we get a similar Jacobian where the rows are determined by the x, y, and z. The columns are determined by the u, v, and w. Um, this being a three by three determinant, these are more cumbersome to um, evaluate. And you're gonna see in the homework, we don't really do a whole lot with these three by threes just because they're very, very lengthy, very tedious. And the method is not really, you know, at its core any different than what we're doing in a, in a two by two case. Um, <clears throat> so this, is what we do if we need to evaluate a triple integral with a change of variables. Same idea, the um, x, y, and z become the functions of u, v, and w that give us each of those variables, x, y, and z. And then uh, we multiply that by the Jacobian that we find here. So I'm only gonna do one example with this, and it's just going to be kind of like what we did um, previously where we confirmed um, where we confirmed our change of variables into polar coordinates using the Jacobian. I'm going to do the same thing for cylindrical coordinates. Your book will walk through a derivation, if you read through this section, of the um, conversion formula into spherical coordinates that we've already discussed using the Jacobian. So since that's all already in your book, I wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about cylindrical. So Again, in, or, in order to start, notice we're not working with an explicit function here. It's just something, some general f of x, y, z. And I want to know what the conversion formula is from, uh, from <clears throat> uh, rectangular into, or sorry, uh, from cylindrical into rectangular look like. So we know that they look mostly like, um, they look mostly like uh, polar coordinates. x is equal to r cosine of theta y is equal to r sine of theta, and then z is just equal to z in cylindrical. So uh, we need nine partial derivatives, the partial of each one of these with respect to the three variables r, theta, and z instead of u, v, and w, okay? So um, partial of x with respect to r would be cosine of theta, partial of x with respect to theta is going to equal negative r sine of theta. Partial of x oops, with respect to z, there is no z here, so this is treated like a constant, and this comes out to just zero. Okay, then we do the y's. Partial of y with respect to r is going to equal sine of theta. Partial of y with respect to theta is r cosine of theta. Partial of y with respect to z, once again, there is no z there, um, so that's treated like a constant, and we get zero, okay? And then the z's, partial of z with respect to r. Okay, well, there is no r here, so this gives me a zero. Um, partial of z with respect to theta is also going to be zero. And then finally, partial of z with respect to z is just going to be one. So I construct my Jacobian out of these values here. Okay, so let's come here. My Jacobian, this is x, y, z. Down here, instead of u, v, and w, I'm using the names of the variables in cylindrical coordinates, which is r, theta, z. That's gonna look like this, three by three. r cosine of theta, r sine of theta, zero. Sine of theta, r, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I put an r in the wrong place. There should not be an r there. Um, r cosine of theta, we should also have a negative here. I was reading the wrong thing. Cosine of theta, zero, and then zero, zero, one. Okay, three by three determinants, just like any determinant, we can evaluate using cofactor expansion, and we can, expect, we can expand across any row or any column that we wish. I'm gonna expand along the third row. Now notice, from my cofactor expansion, I would have zero times this two by two determinant, that's zero 
minus zero times this two by two determinant, that would be zero, plus one times this two by two determinant. The whole thing reduces down to just this. Cosine of theta, negative r sine of theta, sine of theta, positive r, cosine of theta. You may notice that this is the exact two by two determinant that we got when we were um, looking at the conversion into polar coordinates. So we already know what this looks like. R, okay? That means that my triple integral over e of f of x, y, z is going to be equal to um, a triple integral over a region in cylindrical coordinates. I'm just going to say, let's let's suppose this, this region is called um, F or something like that, capital F, not to be confused with the lowercase f that we're using for our function. F of R cosine of theta, we make our substitutions for x, y, and z here, R sine of theta z times my Jacobian, which we found to be R um, times uh, dz, dr, d theta. That's exactly our conversion into cylindrical coordinates that we've talked about already, but using the Jacobian to confirm that we've been doing it right this whole time. And that's going to wrap it up for chapter 15.